For any of you that currently own a DSLR camera, probably not as old as this one, I'm here to tell you that it will work great for deep sky astrophotography, including galaxies. This was my first camera for astrophotography. Yep, I still have it, 11 years later. Does it even make sense to use a DSLR camera for astrophotography in 2022? In this video, I'm gonna show you not only why I think it does, but how astrophotography is not about the equipment you use, it's the skill of the photographer. Hello there, my old friend. Tonight, I'll attach this 14-year-old camera to my telescope to take a picture of a galaxy that lies 2.5 million light years away. Andromeda. I'll use a basic deep sky astrophotography setup, one that is very nostalgic to me and probably the longtime Astro Backyard subscribers as well. The best part is we will actually get to see if this old equipment holds me back or if my experience and processing skills allow me to produce an image up to my current standards using this old gear. For comparison, this is my current best image of the Andromeda galaxy. This was taken about six weeks ago using a large large refractor, a cooled astronomy camera, and under dark skies. So realistically, if I can get anything close to this, it would be a huge win. Because the camera itself is the biggest rewind in terms of technology, it will be the greatest limiting factor towards a great image. The camera is a Canon Rebel XSI, or 450D. It came out in 2008, and I bought it used in 2011. I actually can't believe I found the original battery charger for it to top it up before this video. It has a 12.2 megapixel sensor, a max ISO setting of 1600, and it accepts Canon EF and EFS lenses. I have made two important upgrades to this old DSLR, and I wanted to get that out of the way right now. Number one, I took the camera apart in 2013 to remove the built-in IR cut filter sitting over the sensor. The reason for this popular astro modification is to allow more of the red wavelengths of light to pass through to the sensor, found in emission nebulae and many deep sky objects. This is a trait that really won't have an impact on this particular project. Another one is I bought a third-party battery grip to double my battery power for the night. This is just a cheap one I bought on Amazon or maybe it was eBay, I can't remember. Cameras have come a long way since 2008. The terms mirrorless and dedicated astronomy camera weren't around yet. A lot of people were using these old Canon Rebel DSLRs and a few Nikons for astrophotography back in the day. Telescopes, on the other hand, haven't really changed much at all. This is a doublet refractor, a William Optics Z73 with a dedicated field flattener. I've had this one for a few years now and I've really enjoyed it. The telescope mount, in this case a Skywatcher HEQ5, is one that I purchased used in 2014. It may be old, but it's still a solid performer and does everything I need it to. I will use auto guiding, this little guide scope and guide camera riding on top here, and some additional astronomy software to get the most out of this system. The reason I'm not just slapping this camera on my latest and greatest setup is a mixture between wanting to go full on nostalgic and potential compatibility issues. Can the ASI Air even run an XSI? It feels weird to set up the old rig I used for so many years. It feels awesome, actually. Because all of the software I use to run this old camera and telescope live on my old laptop computer, that's what I'll use to run my imaging session tonight. It's the old laptop in a bucket routine. USB cables draped up to the rig and all. The two main pieces of software I'll use to run my imaging session tonight are astrophotography tool and PHD2 guiding for auto guiding. I kept everything from my original setup, even this USB cable. I can tell it's the one I used to use because it's got that piece of tape on it. Now, ideally, I would be plugging in this camera to AC power to run it all night long without the battery. I just don't have one of those adapters. So let's see if I remember how to do this.
this is just a big, wow. I think that might have been an owl. He was huge. I'll run a series of long exposure images through astrophotography tool on the Andromeda Galaxy. In the background, I'll have PhD2 guiding to make sure those three minute subs are nice and sharp. I should be able to shoot some solid three minute exposures at ISO 1600, maxed out for this camera. There'll be noisy images, sure, but overall integration time is the name of the game in this scenario, and I'm gonna take as many dang shots as I can. If I can collect 60 times three minutes, a solid three hours, I should have enough data for a great photo. Calibration frames, dark frames, bias, and flat frames will ensure that I have some clean data to play with when I bring the files into Photoshop. Setting up the shot is a lot harder with this old camera than it is with my current dedicated astronomy camera system. I'm stuck with a very noisy live view image to focus my telescope and frame up my target and I'm really gonna need to take test exposures to line it up just the way I want it. This is the one part of the process that has really come a long way in the last 10 years, and it's a lot more approachable for beginners. Tools like the ASI Air with its speedy plate solving and handy image framing tools make this process a lot easier. Hmm, I wonder what she's doing. What could it be? Another big change in the last 10 years is electronically assisted polar alignment. Most people use tools like the Pole Master or the Polar Align feature on the ASI Air to get polar aligned. Me, I never minded getting down on my knees and looking through that manual polar scope and doing it the old fashioned way. It only takes about five minutes. Here's a test exposure on the Andromeda Galaxy. As you can see, I've got it pretty well centered in there in the field of view. I think I'm just gonna leave it rather than going back and forth trying to center it perfect. But yeah, very noisy 10 second test exposure, but this is a good sign. I'm gonna be able to set up my sequence here knowing that I'm in focus and that I'm totally framed up with my target. Okay, first exposure, here we go. All right. Again, looks noisy is all, but there's some good data in there. I'll be able to process a nice image out of there, hopefully. I was able to collect about three and a half hours of exposure time on the Andromeda Galaxy. Each exposure was 180 seconds each at ISO 1600. The exposures started to look a lot better as Andromeda crept out of the light dome. The moon had also set by then, and it was a cold night, so all things considered, not bad conditions for this old DSLR. I've stacked all of the exposures together with dark frames, flat frames, and bias to create this healthy master file to play with. Okay, I finally finished processing this bad boy and I'm ready to show you my results. I'll compare it to my previous latest version using much more sophisticated gear. Okay, I realize that image processing has a lot to do with the final results. But honestly, does the latest and greatest equipment make you a better astrophotographer? Maybe, but I bet you'd be surprised at the potential that old camera has. Mm -hmm.